a lot of stuff that's on today is coonery and buffoonery. And I know it's making a lot of money, breaking records, but we could do better. I will punch the hell out of you. Say something else. That is my answer to Spike Lee. Go to hell. Go. Sh People love it. Why in the hell would I sit here worried about Spike Lee? I finished Mia Copa, and all I can say is Tyler Perry, count your days. Another Tyler Perry movie, another flop, not even an endorsement from Beyonce was enough to save Tyler's new movie, Mea Culpa, starring Kelly Rowland and Trevante Rhodes. The critics are calling it embarrassing and nonsensical, while the fans are saying they refuse to watch it because written, produced, and directed by Tyler Perry is a big enough clue to avoid this movie like the plague. And you know who's probably saying, I told you so? None other than the legendary movie director Spike Lee, who tried to warn people about Tyler years ago and expose him for humiliating black actors. And he's parlayed it into a, you know, bought his own jet. You know, you can buy a jet, you got money. But at the same time, for me, just imagery is, is, is troubling. Spike Lee, the Oscar-winning director, producer, and screenwriter, is renowned for his movies and documentaries that explore race relations, issues within the black community, urban crime and poverty, and other important social and political issues. Tyler Perry, on the other hand, is known for creating and profiting off of his alter ego, Medea, a character widely regarded as a demeaning black stereotype. But this is just scratching the surface of how problematic Tyler Perry is. He's also been accused of rubbing shoulders with some shady characters like certain prosperity preachers, while also facing lawsuits over unfair labor practices. Tyler is also notorious for refusing to hire writers. In fact, he often brags about writing all his work himself and being able to churn out a new script in a matter of weeks. Um, yeah, we can tell. And again, this is just scratching the surface of everything Tyler Perry has been accused of. Here is a new blind item about seven alleged male victims of Tyler Perry's who are ready to come forward. At least seven men are ready to talk about the bullying and coercion inflicted upon them by this movie-making mogul who likes to dress up. Many kept records and are ready to go public. Pay attention to the men in his movies and you will see that he has a type. But see, when Spike Lee tried to warn people almost 20 years ago about Tyler Perry, fans called Spike a hater. However, fast forward to today and the public is squarely on Spike Lee's side. To understand the context of Spike's issues with Tyler, you have to consider how Spike uses the art of cinema to tackle important topics. Think of his cult classes like Do the Right Thing. Spike wasn't just making a movie, he was diving into the deep end of political cinema. What I like about the title is that everyone has their own interpretation of what is the right thing not only in the audience, but the characters in the film too. I would love to go to theaters all across the country and watch the film, sit in the back, hat down, and then stand out in the lobby and listen to the debates and the arguments and these exchanges. I mean, people, the ushers will be mad because people were, were not leaving and they had to bring in the next show. And that was really, what we want to try to do with that film, to really spark discussion, exchange of ideals, debate about race. Spike's award-winning documentaries are equally fearless in tackling heavy topics and the dark side of America's history, like his documentary on the 1963 Baptist Church bombing or the Rodney King beating case. Spike's take on cinema is a powerful force that grabs hold of the audience, not because it's melodramatic and vulgar like Tyler Perry's movies are often accused of being, but because it forces the audience to confront different socioeconomic realities they might not have thought about before and open their eyes to the harsh truths that often get swept under the rug. The people that make movies, I think they're very disrespectful to the intelligence of the American movie going audience. I think that they play down to the lowest common denominator. Anyone else here smarter than me? They just try to play the audience like they're stupid. And I think that's uh, when you do that, you end up making, you know, $75 million bombs. So it's only natural that someone like Spike Lee wouldn't be a fan of Tyler Perry's work. Back in 2009, during an interview at the 14th Annual Black Enterprise Conference, Spike had a few choice words to say about filmmakers like Tyler, questioning the image of black people they portray through their highly stereotypical characters. While Spike said that each artist should be allowed to create in a way they think is the best, he didn't mince words when it came to Tyler Perry's version of cinema, calling it coonery buffoonery. Each artist should be allowed to pursue the artistic endeavor but I still think there a lot of stuff that's on today
is coonery buffoonery. And I know it's making a lot of money, breaking records, but we could do better. When asked if Tyler Perry's success among black audiences was a result of just giving the audience what they wanted, Spike said that audiences have a responsibility to choose what kind of media they give attention to, adding that the imagery in Tyler Perry's movies is troubling. A lot of this is on us. You know, we, you vote with your pocketbook, your wallet, you vote with uh, your time sitting in front of the, the idiot box. For me, just imagery is, is, is troubling. As you can see, Spike gave a very thoughtful answer. However, when they asked Tyler Perry to comment on this, he did this. I will punch the hell out of you. Say something else. That is my answer to Spike Lee. Go to hell. Go. Sh I will punch the hell out of you. Say something else. Let me just let me just say this about Spike or anybody else, or all the critics, anybody else. You know. It's only black people that do this to each other. I have never seen Jewish people complaining about Seinfeld. I've never seen Italian people complaining about The Sopranos. It's only us as n that do this to each other. People love it. Why in the hell would I sit here worried about Spike Lee? So basically, Spike commented on Tyler with intellect and maturity, and Tyler's response was to play Medea saying, I will punch the hell out of you. Well, that's one way to prove Spike's point. Also, something that speaks volumes about Tyler Perry's character is how he refuses to acknowledge any kind of criticism, despite multiple people saying the same thing. And Sure, art is subjective, but it's hard to ignore the fact that most of Tyler's movies employ offensive and negative stereotypes about black Americans, something that many public figures have voiced concerns about. Shortly after Spike Lee criticized Tyler's movies, writer and cultural critic Jamila Lemieux wrote an open letter to Tyler saying that his shows such as Meet the Browns and House of Pain are marked by old stereotypes of buffoonish, emasculated black men and crass, sassy black women. Lemieux also criticized the Medea character, claiming that through her, the country has laughed at one of the most important members of the black community, Mother Dear, the beloved matriarch. Our mothers and grandmothers deserve much more than that. Finally, Lemieux urged Tyler to stop dismissing the critics as haters and realize that black people need new stories and new storytellers. But after all these years, it looks like Tyler Perry still hasn't learned to accept criticism. In fact, in a recent interview, he slammed his black critics, claiming they don't deserve respect because they've educated themselves away from their blackness. When I get into those hoity toity who don't understand looking down their nose at everything and how dare you know it, 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 it I marvel at them and how intelligent they are but how they can miss the most simple things of what this truly is and I marvel at any black person who wants to remove themselves from their blackness there's this instant thing of let me get away from where I come from let me get away from the Medeas of my family let me educate myself away from my blackness those people I don't have respect for and this wasn't a one-time thing Tyler has a long track record of continuously dismissing any type of criticism, no matter how well-meaning or constructive it is. When he faced backlash back in 2016 over the all-white cast of his TV series Too Close to Home, Tyler blamed it on reverse racism, saying, that's totally reverse racism because it was coming from African-American people. I don't know if it was because they thought I should only be giving jobs to black people. But see, when you become a billionaire by making movies that perpetuate negative stereotypes about black people, then this kind of criticism is expected. To give you another example, Tyler was recently a Again, asked about Spike Lee's coonery buffoonery comments, and once again, he arrogantly dismissed his critics, accusing them of looking down on their own culture. When Medea first started, first came out, uh, Spike Lee called it coonery buffoonery, and and over the years, there have been a number of people who say that you're playing with negative stereotypes of black men and black women. How do you respond? black men. I've heard, I've heard it all. Yeah. How do you respond to that? I, there's a certain part of, of our society, especially black people in, in, the, in the culture, that they look down on certain things within the culture. Now, if Tyler Perry was willing to at least consider the point his critics are trying to make instead of instantly getting defensive, maybe his response would hold water. However, he seems to always blame others for supposedly looking down on their culture, while at the same time claiming that he is a man of the people who cares about his community. But if Tyler cares about his community, why does he have a documented history of using non-union labor in his productions? Why not support black actors and writers who are fighting 
fighting for their rights. Back in 2008, the Writers Guild of America West filed an unfair labor practice complaint against Tyler's production studio after he fired four black writers who worked on his comedy, House of Pain. And according to the complaint, the only reason the writers were fired was because they were seeking union representation. So yeah, Tyler's off-screen persona seems to be equally deserving of criticism as his characters, which is another reason why the majority of fans are now siding with Spike Lee. One fan said, Spike Lee was absolutely correct on this. We all looked past the truth for a laugh, but we now see the truth playing out before us. And another person added, now I understand why Tyler is more promoted than Spike Lee, because Spike's message will be disturbing for the elites. I run for Spike Lee now more than ever. But what are your thoughts on this Spike Lee vs. Tyler Perry conversation? And if you've seen Tyler's new movie, let us know how you felt about it. Drop your comments below and check out this next video.